Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Hollowitz and I want to talk to you about working with the calendar in Microsoft Outlook. In our last tutorial we had worked primarily in mail but what I had done, and I clicked on mail down here down below, what we had done to sort of get into the calendar area is we had taken an email, clicked on it, and dragged it down here and placed it on top of the calendar option and let go. What it did is it opened up Microsoft Outlook and helped us schedule this item that says 1230 gloves. Okay, so you can drag and drop emails to schedule things related to those emails. That's a great little way to sort of clean up your inbox and also to get things on your calendar to schedule things to make you more productive and efficient and, and make things time sensitive. So on that note, when we look at Outlook's calendar, this tutorial we're going to spend a little more time talking about the calendar and how to work with it. And typically, when I look at a calendar, we sort of develop our own preferences for the way we look at things. But I'm going to focus initially on a day view. Now keep in mind, today happens to be October 29th. I've got something scheduled for 1230 today. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on the day view so we see the view of today's events. Now, on that note, I don't see that much. I can see from 7 a.m. till about 2 p.m. But I want you to observe that if we had a higher monitor resolution where we could see more of the screen, we could probably see down to like 7 or 8 o'clock so we'd see more. Over here on the left we have our calendar for October and November. Here is today's calendar. Let's say for example that at 10 o'clock I needed to pick up some milk. Well, all I have to do is click on that and type in milk that's it. Now click away from it and I've locked that in. Let's say at 1030 I need to get some uh, bread. Well I can just type in bread and click away from it. Let's say I need to move these things. Let's say I want to move milk to a different time. Well if I put my pointer on milk and click and hold and drag down I can move it down to 1130. Now when we look at the calendar we can look at the calendar with different views. For example let's say that and I'm not going to get into this right now, I'll get into it in a different tutorial, but let's say that the nature of our schedule is we did things every 15 minutes, we scheduled things every 15 minutes. This particular view of the calendar is only showing us half hour increments, but on that note we can go in and modify the calendar so we see things in different time periods or increments. That's something I'll show you again in another time. Let's say the milk, we really need to do it at 10.30 when we get the bread. Well, if we just drag it up and put it on top of milk and let go, now it's scheduled it side by side. Okay, let's say the bread is going to take longer than this half hour time. Well, I'm going to click on it, and when I click on it, you'll notice that I have squares on the top and on the bottom. And if I want to click the bottom and drag down, now what I've done is I've just rescheduled it for an hour long period of time. Let's say I want to put more detail in the bread thing that I scheduled. If I double click on bread, this dialog box opens up. I could put a location in, I can modify the date and time here, but more importantly I can come in and type in wheat, rye bread, and let's say and Italian bread. Okay. Go up and click on save and close, and now I have bread here. Now let me show you one little thing. My calendar is only displaying bread. If I double click on it, it will show me more detail. If I want to see this detail up here, or if I want to see it clearly on the calendar, I would put it up here. And I just copied and pasted that, click save and close, and now it's right there. So you can put a large level of detail in there if you feel it's necessary, but if you really want to see what it is about on your calendar, no problem. Let's go up to the view item and I'm going to click on work week. Now we see our calendar as a work week. If I scroll up and down a little bit we can see a little clearer. Let's say I got busy and I couldn't get milk today. Well all I have to do is click on milk and drag it to anywhere on the calendar. If I'm going to do gloves tomorrow just drag that elsewhere. If I want to schedule something here I just click, type, and I'm just going to type in my name. Let's just say I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. I'd this time. okay. Very easy to go into Microsoft Outlook and work with the calendar. Again, the week view just brings in 
the full week and the month is the month view. Now the, as we get to bigger views of more days we see less and less detail. So what we can do is when we click on day that give us, gives us the highest level of detail. But again we can move things around. Let's say we want to move the bread to the first, no problem. Okay, We can do that. Now what can be awkward at times is when we come to the end of the month like we are now and we want to schedule things to November we can't really see November. But let's say the milk is something we want to get in the middle of November. Well I'm going to click on it. I'm going to drag it over here to this calendar and let's say we want to see it on the 19th. I'm going to drop it right on November 19th and now that's where I've scheduled it. So you can use these calendars over here to your benefit. So working with a calendar is very very easy in Microsoft Outlook but let me tell you a couple things that I'm not really fond of when it comes to Microsoft Outlook and working with a calendar and that's this. I'm going to drag the gloves back over here. Now because I scheduled it for a time in the past I am going to get a prompt or a reminder that tells me it's got to be done. Now when a reminder pops up I can snooze it and I can pick the amount of time or I can dismiss it. Okay. If I have multiple things pop up I can dismiss all. But in this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snooze it for five minutes. The thing I don't like about Microsoft Outlook is this. When you're done with an activity all you do is click on it and hit delete and it's gone. Just gone. But the problem with Microsoft Outlook is it doesn't create a history of what's happening. When you delete something it's like it never happened. My experience has been for sales and marketing and a lot of businesses Outlook is a great email program but there are certain things it falls down on as it relates to managing stuff and keeping records and history and one of the programs that I teach a software program called ACT does that very well. ACT is a great contact manager, it's a great way to keep records, notes, history better than Outlook. But ACT is not a great email program. Outlook's a great email program but not a great contact manager. But the good news is they work together. So before you get too vested in Microsoft Outlook to manage your business really reach out to me and ask me what the differences are. You know, I'll try to do a tutorial in the future, but for right now, just recognize that there are some limitations, in my opinion, to using Microsoft Outlook. As far as the calendar, there's a lot of little things you can do with it. We'll do some more tutorials to show you how to work with this as we go along. But go in and use the calendar. It's really easy to use, and I think you just got to get in practice with it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tony Hollowitz, and I want to thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.